one of the most interesting patients we had ever seen was a 34-year-old female who came in a wheelchair, tremor, did not know where she was, who she was, with a history of probably HIV encephalopathy of about 18 months duration. The patient had deteriorated seriously over this period of time and was total care. She received 40 treatments at 1.5 ATA. A spec scan was done prior to the treatments. The patient uh, showed some improvement and left. One year later, the patient returned. She was fully ambulatory, no motor, no sensory, no gross deficiency. She was cognitive, talking, returned with her boyfriend. She said, I've never been here before. When she saw her picture in the wheelchair, she was dumbfounded. She could not believe that she had been in that shape. The spec scan showed dramatic improvement and speak for themselves. There was no question that the hyperbaric oxygen was doing something important in terms of increasing or uh, let's say re-establishing blood flow in areas of the brain where there was no blood flow. After 26 treatments, my son's sex scan showed remarkable improvement. Now though, it'll take time. Now it's the brain, it has to work, it has to understand what to do with it. But we're seeing after treatments, his right side was more weaker than the left and and they, we were more scared because there was tremors, like they're shaking and it's like, oh God, what's going on? Is it seizures? But no, it's just his whole side waking up. He's more active in the uppers. <laughs> and <laughs> she's teasing you. So everything's just coming along and we'll just pray that it works. That experience uh, was very impressive to me in that for the first time there was, an, there was evidence that something was happening with hyperbaric oxygen that wasn't happening with people who were just getting no normal treatment or no treatment. A recently published study outlines research conducted at Nova Southeastern University on the effects of hyperbaric oxygen treatments on chronic neurological disorders. Using spec scans to measure results, the study shows for the first time that with hyperbaric oxygen treatments, there was an overall increase in blood flow after treatments and that hyperbaric oxygen treatments can cause significant changes in the metabolism of the brain. The spec scan does show significant changes in blood flow to the brain. As such, it is uh, a measure of uh, the changes uh, that occur during therapy. We will thank Dr. Nuara for this when we leave because it's what we've got and we'll we love every moment of it for a child who wasn't even supposed to live. Yeah. So show them your tongue. <laughs> if we get the little ones in the early years while they're still growing brain tissue, we give them a much more favorable environment in which to grow brain tissue. There is hope. And uh, I put my faith in Dr. Neubauer and my faith and it came true. If I hadn't brought her here, when I brought her here, she wouldn't be here today. She would have probably died because she was so critical. And she's doing so much better. I do some crazy things. I mean, my child ate for the first time in three years when we came to Dr. Newbuyer, and we had a little four-ounce thing of yogurt. I took that four-ounce thing of yogurt, and I framed it. It's like having a new birth, a new child, but it's the same child. Amber. Severe hypoglycemia leads to seizure disorders resulting in brain damage. She requires almost total care. She's fed through a nose tube. Because of her agitated state, Amber is kept in a low bed so she won't hurt herself. It took three people to help her stand for the first time. Her pain is evident as she undergoes therapy. The spec scan showed minimal cortical function. But after hyperbaric oxygenation, there was a mark filling in of the cortex, and although still patchy, there was about a 70 to 80% improvement in the scan. After 60 hyperbaric oxygen treatments, there was a corresponding improvement in Amber's condition. She can walk. She's become self-sufficient. 
Amber can attend school and even go to summer camp by herself. And in about 80% of the cases, we get rid of the G-tubes. In 70%, we get rid of the tracheotomies. And a large percentage of them, we get a human being back who can communicate either word board, computer, verbally. The bowels become normal. The patients gain weight. The care is lessened by 90%. The families are delighted because they have a human individual back. Patients come from around the world because hyperbaric oxygen treatments have positive effects on neurological conditions. We saw the, uh, the TV uh, news where they had the write-up on it and immediately we called and made an appointment and um, his mom, uh, we said we have to try it, we just have to try it. And we met one of the little boys, Eric, which he was uh, on almost drowning, he was two years uh, old. And the little child walks and he, he's just, it's a miracle what hyperbaric did to him and uh, we just felt we had to. And again, you know, insurance doesn't cover it. So we did a, a fundraiser and a lot of friends and family and we've collected a lot of money and we've here, you know, 70 treatments. We've seen some improvement. The spec scan is another reason what got me out here because I wanted to see, I, we've had MRIs, we've had CAT scans, EEGs, everything. I wanted to see what the after effect. They, he does them before, during, and after, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and so we will see what, what the difference is. Mm -hmm. You know, so we'll have something to take back to mm -hmm. our doctor. Now our doctor, our neurologist, is very encourageable about this. Mm -hmm. She is she she is the one that and his pediatrician, go do this. This is I've heard great things. Go do this. She asked me if I've ever tried hyperbaric oxygen and I had never heard of it before, so I Quickly, this was only like three or four weeks ago, I quickly found out uh, where the hyperbaric oxygen places were. I called Pennsylvania, New Jersey, um, various places, and they all told me the same thing, that Dr. Neubauer was the godfather of hyperbaric oxygen. So I thought, well, he's got to be better than the others since he's been doing it for so many years, I guess 30-some years. Seeing is believing, and I don't think anybody who works here hasn't seen uh, almost miraculous, or I don't like to use that word, but let's say dramatic changes in patients who, c who couldn't do certain things and now can do certain things. Well, you know, whatever the mechanism is, it's important to understand that truly, but at the same time, think of what the impact is on the patient or more or, or as well on the caregivers around that patient.